Hello everybody! Welcome to Something Political's 8 video. After a relatively longer time period, we are back again, this time to use our neorealist lenses to make sense of the Harry Potter universe. Before you start watching, we would like to warn you that this video has some information from the HP series that will probably come as a spoiler to you if you haven't read the books or seen the movies. But anyways, if you're ready, let's get into it. According to neorealists, the reason why the world has wars and conflict is not about the selfish human nature, but the system itself. The system is defined by anarchy and a constant struggle for balance of power, and that pushes states to fight with each other since they want to survive under these conditions. Now, let's wear our neorealist glasses and observe the HP universe. Can we say that the wizarding world had two great wars only because of Lord Voldemort? Would it suffice to say that wizards have fought with each other because Voldemort was a horrible and selfish wizard who cared about nothing but being the greatest wizard of all times? The answer is no, at least for neorealists. The wizarding world had wars because their system was broken. From Salazar Slytherin's obsession about purebloods to Grindelwald and young Dumbledore's desires and to Lord Voldemort's actions, they were all both inputs and outputs of the system. They both supported the system to become more broken while being results of such a messed up system. For instance, both Salazar Slytherin and Lord Voldemort saw muggles as big threats to the wizard identity and they acted on this assumption. In a way, they balanced the threat to survive. On the other hand, the good wizards saw Slytherin and Voldemort as a threat to their and muggles' security. So they also acted according to this assumption. In this way, both sides aim to reach a conflict-free environment, of course, in their own terms. Now, let's think about the sub-schools of neorealism. Defensive realists like Kenneth Waltz would probably give the good wizards as an example of his thinking. These wizards never wanted to maximize their power, they were just trying to stay alive. That is why they had to fight with Voldemort. On the other hand, offensive realists like John Mearsheimer would say, no, in this story, what Voldemort did made more sense. Seeking for more power. Because surviving under anarchy as the given setting of the wizarding world would never be enough for wizards to guarantee their security. Therefore, they need to act immediately and do not stop until they become the greatest of all times. In terms of his ideas about different characteristics of the world politics, it can also be argued that Kenneth Waltz would have rooted for the bipolar structure of the wizarding world just before Voldemort died in the second wizarding war. He would probably say that such a bipolar structure would have made the world of wizards more secure since Harry and Voldemort would balance each other without letting the other gaining the upper hand. But it was obvious that this was not the case, the world was not a safer place during this period of bipolarity. How would Waltz explain this? Well, we think that he would say that the period was not a good example of bipolarity, one side was always more powerful than the other side. This is our explanation. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So that brings us to the end of the video in which we use our neorealist lenses to make sense of the HP universe. This is also the end of our series about realism. We will continue with the liberal school of thought in our next videos. If you liked the video, please do not forget to like it. And for our other videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.